The griffin vulture was once very common in Israel. Fifty years ago, more than a thousand pairs bred on cliffs from the Golan and Galilee in the north to the Judean hills and Negev Desert in the south. Today there are only about 40 pairs left, and the vulture is on the verge of extinction. But on the other side of the zoo, the National Center for Artificial Incubation of Raptor Eggs helps bring vulture populations back up. Every year, it incubates up to 15 vulture eggs. Yesterday, this year's first chick hatched. Okay. So, uh, what shall I say? This is the first chick for this season. His parents are from uh, the Golanites, and uh, he was, uh, the egg was laid in Gamla. No one knows exactly why the population has plummeted, but factors probably include eating poisoned livestock, habitat destruction, and electrocution. You can see his beak pointing up, eye closed below it. And you think he's making that sound because he's being disturbed a little, little bit? No, no, he's just uh, doing what he's supposed to do. That's uh, in order to stimulate his parents to come and feed him. Yeah. So we have to play the role of the parents. Griffin vulture nests are closely monitored throughout Israel. What often happens is after an egg is laid, the parents mysteriously disappear. So we don't really know what happens to, uh, to the parents. There are lots of nests which are being built, eggs are being laid, and suddenly the parents vanish. Both the mother and the father? Sometimes both, sometimes one of them. But usually if uh, one of them is vanishing, then uh, the, the nest will be abandoned because uh, the one parent cannot uh, take care of, uh, of the egg. Sometimes a dead vulture is found, but often not. If he will drop dead in Israel, there's a big chance that he will be found, the dead vulture, and then we can know the reason of that, the cause of that. But the problem is that they also go to Lebanon, they also go to Syria, to Turkey, and we don't really know what happens there. Some of the eggs in the center come from vultures in zoos. Half the eggs come from uh, um, zoos, which are keeping vultures in Israel. We let them lay in captivity, remove the eggs, that stimulates them to uh, lay another egg, and it's double the chances of getting chicks that later on will be released to the wild. After hatching, there are two ways a chick might be raised until it can survive on its own to be released into the wild. Being moved either to foster parents, which are uh, vultures sitting on eggs in zoos all, of, all around the country, or they are being hand reared in a method which will prevent them from uh, getting imprinted to the keeper. The chicks are fed with a special stuffed vulture device, so they don't get used to human caretakers. It's used uh, to uh, feed the live chicks and uh, teach them how to be a vulture. Exactly. You just put uh, some uh, food in it and remove it and put it inside to the vulture mouth, to wow. the vulture chick mouth. Very simple. Wow. Where is next stop for today's chick? This yeah. one specifically is going to a zoo in uh, Safari Ramat Gan. There are vultures too. There is a pair of vultures who laid the egg two days ago. So we are going to remove the egg, bring it to here, and take this chick for the parents. And we do it, we do it all, all the time. It's usually they accept it without any problems. The center has been incubating eggs since 1998. Recently, because of the problems with griffin vultures, all the eggs have been vultures. In the past, falcon, sea eagle, and kestrel eggs were also incubated. It's time for a little water both to drink and to keep the egg membrane, which is still attached to the bird, moist.